Okay, it's been over 10 years since the last, or should I say the first Malaysian human space, space flight program. And I got a chance to participate in it as an angkasawan, meaning as a Malaysian cosmonaut. I was lucky. And given the background, my background is dentistry, right now there's a lot of questions uh, that people ask me. One of the most popular questions is why from dentistry to space? Yeah, sounds a bit offbeat, but I'll get to that later. During the space program, my age was 27. I'm about 38 now. And yes, Mr. Yuri Gagarin was also 27 during his space program. So you can understand the hype that I was in during that time. And the question that runs in my head at that particular time was, why do humans go to space? Like, really, why? So I wanted to know more. I mean, of course, I can read it from Google. But I wanted to know hands-on. I want to derive the answer by immersing myself into the whole space program. And I got the opportunity. So I went to Yuri Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Russia, Moscow where I finished all the training, going to all the subjects from spacecraft engineering right up to orbital mechanics, doing extreme medical examination every three months, to doing gym work every day to get my fitness level up. And mind you that not all space training aspect is fun. I kid you not because the extreme medical examination, like gastroscopy, is no fun at all. So what did I discover? Turns out that people go to space because of the exploration. And I found out that it's more than just scientific exploration. It's the exploration of the imagination because humankind challenges its imagination and we, will, we could do something that is impossible. Like Einstein said, logic will take you from point A to point B, but imagination will take you everywhere. So, on the logic side, there's three reasons why humans go to space. First, will be the exploration beyond Earth, to study and understand the universe, planets, and maybe life form. And I believe you guys know the most popular exploration right now is the exploration to Mars. Yep, and it's targeted for 2030, and it will potentially be the epitome of human frontier. The second objective is, due to the high altitude, we could see our home, Earth, much clearer. And Earth observational study really teaches a lot about climate change and environmental change. Uh, GPS application, yeah? uh, deforestation issues, and also visualization public policy through landscape changes. The third objective of why humans go to space is because of the microgravity science. Well, I believe that this aspect is the most hardest for people to grasp. But the main focus is to utilize microgravity to do good science work. So let me explain. I'm going to use a simplified photosynthesis experiment as an analogy. In a simplified photosynthesis experiment, it is possible to eliminate the light by putting the plant in total darkness and derive conclusion, how does the light affect the plant growth, right? So imagine now that gravity is the element. 
if we could eliminate gravity, we will start seeing cells, metal, alloy, ceramic, polymers will behave in its true raw behavior, unaffected by gravity. So this will give scientists a lot of knowledge about the raw behavior of things in our Earth. And one of the examples of microgravity science is protein crystallization. We all know that in our body, there's a lot of protein, about 100,000 protein that um, perform daily, important daily tasks, like transporting oxygen, um, chemicals, uh, building up tissues, bones, and also uh, fighting diseases. So scientists wanted to know the structure of the protein in order to derive a proper drug. In order to do that, you have to crystallize the protein. Yeah? Unfortunately, crystallization is affected by gravity. So you bring the protein up to space, crystallize it. You will get a more homogeneous crystal that enables you to understand the structure fully, hence, to derive a proper drug. So that's microgravity science. Well, I know it's a bit heavy technical stuff, but I hope that in-depth technical knowledge doesn't deter your interest. interest. It should spark curiosity, yeah? Because I think in-depth technical knowledge will let you see reality clearer. What I meant is, I'm sure most of you understand that gravity is non-existent in space. Uh, am I right? But because we were told that way, we were also been told that the moon gravity affect our tides. Notice that these two statements contradict each other and yet we are happy living with it. What about the sun gravity affecting other planets to make it orbit in its own platform so that they will not collide? So really, I'm asking you, is there no gravity on Earth? I understand. It's hard to see reality clearly without the details. Let me explain. If this is an aircraft or a spacecraft and a, an Earth, the spacecraft is affected by the gravity. So by logic, it is falling down. But the spacecraft have thrusters that push it, well, horizontally, but in this picture, vertically. Vertically enough to miss the Earth continuously. Instead of plunging towards the Earth, it plunges around the Earth. And we call that orbit. So now we know that in space, there's gravity. And in order for your spacecraft to come back, which you want to come back if you're in space, you simply off the engine or the thrusters and let gravity pull you back down. If in space there's no gravity, I think it's difficult for you to come back. So notice that it's more clearer. Reality is clearer if you understand the details. Through my journey of space program, I got the chance to also uncover a lot of technology, spin-off technology, that I wanted to highlight in this topic. Uh, because a lot of people are not aware of. Technology like wireless headset, I'm sure you guys are very familiar with it, can be traced back, the invention can be traced back to space technology. Those days, during the early space days, um, the scientists need to think how to let the astronaut work freely without the disturbance of wire entanglement that lead to the invention of cordless separators. Yeah, another example, we are familiar with the um, ear 
thermometer. What's the difference between this and the traditional thermometer? It gets the reading faster. And in the space program, you know temperature reading is important and doctors will monitor the temperature reading right up to the last minute before the astronaut jump into the spacecraft. With the heavy suit, this invention happens to make it easier to monitor their health. I'm sure you guys are familiar with this. During the 1990s, NASA tried to create a small enough camera to be fitted in a spacecraft. And one third of uh, present-day camera right now is using that technology. And also the famous anti-scratch lens. Windows spacecraft get affected by the harshness of um, the launching process or the harshness environment of space. So scientists needed to think on how to create a hard coat lens technique that is now being used in a lot of industries. I'm sure that your anti-scratch lens is also from that technique, which can be traced back to space program. So you see, there's a lot of spin-off innovation it comes from space program. And I believe that this innovation will not be possible if mankind doesn't challenge itself by exploring the unimaginable. So let's get back to the popular question that I get. Why dentistry to space program? Well, most people, I think, they learn highly technical skill or knowledge for career prospect. And they stop learning outside their career. But I think that, you know, highly technical skill should be embraced because it helps you to think or see reality clearer. This is what I meant. In clearer reality, we will easily grasp what Arnold Schwarzenegger is trying to say when he said, great haps is made in the kitchen, not in the gym. Because in reality, what he's trying to say is, in order for you to be healthy, you must understand that nutrition comes first, second exercise. So that we will not be forcing ourselves with false reality and telling ourselves whenever we do bad food choice, like, it's okay, I can eat those pizzas and uh, marble cheesecake because I work out every day. It doesn't work that way. Let me give you a second example. In clarity of the subject investing, finance and economics, we will be able to differentiate between wealth and money because it's not the same. Why it's not the same? Because we can see that lottery winners immediately go broke after five years down the road. Or some rich celebrity somehow manages to be in debt. Because wealth comes from good habit, comes from good mindset and knowledge. So, you know, I love this line from Denzel Washington in The Equalizer 2, when he says that it takes talent to make money, but it, it needs brain to keep it. Implying that you can turn money into wealth with knowledge. So, what I'm trying to say here is that I think a lot of people shy away from in-depth technical knowledge. Yeah? But what we really want to do is to seek it further. Even if you are an accountant, it's okay for you to learn medicine. It's everywhere. Do not shy away. Because I believe that individuals that are constantly looking for in-depth, either it's technical or non-technical knowledge, 
will be immune to a lot of things. One of it is such vague conspiracy like the flat earth theory. It's simply impossible if you understand the orbit, orbital mechanics that flat earth theory couldn't exist. It's a vague theory. But guys, sometimes false reality is as believable as subconsciously believing that the color of the sky is blue. You don't, it goes unnoticed in front of you. But we all know that the sky is translucent. It's not blue. So again, what I'm trying to say or what I'm suggesting here is that I think in order for us to see reality clearly, we should embrace knowledge, not shy away from them. Yeah? Because clarity lies in the details, not vagueness, if reality that you're interested in. Thank you.